G'day crypto guys, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where we can still see red in the markets. A little bit of support for BTC today. Could it be a dead cat bouncing? We can see at the moment it's holding reasonably steady around the $40,000 mark. Ethereum still struggling going down to $2,600. But the big gainer is ICP. Look at this little bad boy coming up. ICP currently to $199. US dollars up 35% in the last 24 hours. Phone has been off the hook, email has been off the hook, and I'm overloaded with information from multiple sources. But there's one quick email I'd like to read to you that I thought was written very well by Luke from Coinjar, and I share this with you now. The crash we had to have. Yeesh, that was unpleasant. Three takeaways from a night crypto won't soon forget. And before I actually read this, I was talking to someone about this comparative to 2017. And I was thinking, all the newbies in the space, first of all, welcome. And second of all, if you are still with us and are weathering the storm, congratulations. Yes, congratulations. You have earned your first crypto battle stripes. As many of us went through this, a similar experience, perhaps worse, depending how you're looking at it, in 2017, when an absolute bloodbath smashed the market, destroying many people as it crashed down hard at the end of 2017. For the newcomers who are coming into this space and have never experienced such volatility, now you understand it. Now you know what this is about, and now you understand that extreme performance performance comes at the cost of extreme volatility. Markets are always moving up and down, rarely perfectly sideways. But now you have been through this. And I have seen in some of my comments, a few tantrums. And I'm sorry to see that, but I understand it. I understand the emotional side behind it, where people have actually said in the comments, I'm out of this space, and I am never, ever coming back again. And that's a tragedy because this is part of the crypto journey. I know that's kind of hard to accept for many people, but if you really think that you can just come in and throw a hundred bucks in today and then drive away in a brand new Lamborghini Aventador tomorrow, you've got a lot to learn. However, if you weather this storm and hold steady and continue to dollar cost average or buy the dips or just look away, simply do nothing, you will earn the great rewards that are coming to us. Which leads us to this email that I thought was very well written. It goes on to say, Well, it dang gone happened again. Much like March last year, an insistent correction became a full-blown catastrophe as the crypto world's addiction to leverage led to the kind of sell-off you typically associate with the Zimbabwean dollar. At 11pm last night, while pretty much every exchange on the planet went down under the strain, the Bitcoin price crashed to under 30,000 US dollars, a correction of 54% from its April highs before almost instantly rebounding to a slightly more palatable 37,000 US dollars, to a slightly more palatable 37k. Now you can see we're now at 40k, so things are getting a little bit better. Again, is it a dead cat bouncing? Who knows? Time will tell. Reading on. Alts to that point, outperforming Bitcoin by a significant margin were even harder hit with many dropping 40 to 50% in a single hour. Watching it happen in real time was, to put it lightly, stressful. And now here we are in the cold light of day trying to make sense of what happened. Here are three takeaways. Now these takeaways, my crypto brothers and sisters, I thought were very important and I share them with you now. Number one, stay away from leverage. Look, we get it. Leverage is exciting. The prospect of catching that big move at 20x or even 100x is mouthwatering. Put in $100, get $10,000 back. But leverage basically exists so that traders in traditional markets, that is commodities and foreign exchanges, where a 30% move can take years to play out, have something to make things more interesting while they wait. Needless to say, that's not how crypto markets work. When 30% days in either direction are not just a possibility, but expected, the last thing you need to do is supercharge that risk by making leveraged bets. You want to know why the price touched US 30,000 last night? Because around 1 million traders lost $10 billion in a cascading wave of liquidations, and that money ain't ever coming back. 
Now, before we read on, that's a really good point about leverage trading. I was speaking to one of my private students tonight in the world of crypto, and I was talking about many of the models that apply to olden day markets, that is traditional markets that only have very small moves and only operate during business hours. Many of the tools and functions from those markets are being applied catastrophically to the crypto markets. It doesn't quite work. Some work and some have certain value, but when you're trying to apply olden day methods and olden day tools to new day and fast markets, you can have massively painful consequences. And one of those realities is leverage trading in crypto markets. Remember, the olden day markets can move around four or five percent in an entire year. Mate, we have four or five percent in a second. And so if you want to leverage your trades by putting 10, 20, 30 X on it, then you're going to get yourself real hurt real fast. Moving on to number two, take a step back. Now, this one is important. Catastrophic moves are emotional affairs. It's difficult to watch your personal wealth evaporate before your eyes. You sit there numb while your animal brain screams at you to do something, damn it. But the best thing to do is usually nothing. Put down the phone, walk away, read a book, any decision you take in the moment will almost certainly be the wrong one. That's how markets work. They punish impulse and emotion. It's what makes you sell at the bottom and buy at the top. Just remember, a similar crash happened in September 2017 with the price dropping from 5,000 US dollars to 3,000 US dollars in a matter of days. Three months later, it touched 20,000 US dollars. History won't necessarily repeat, but the point remains, it's hard to make good decisions in the heat of battle. And before we read the last point, I'd just like to expand on that a little bit more. In my book and in my videos, I've spoken about the emotions of the markets. Most of the moves in the markets aren't based on numbers, they are based on emotions. That is, the outcome is numbers, but the move up or down is a result of emotions in the markets. Why? Because markets are made up of people, and people are made up of emotions. Now, if you're in the workplace, you know when you're pissed off at your coworker and you type that email, you should really sleep on it before you press send. Otherwise, you're really going to regret it. And that is consistent with the crypto markets. You get spooked, you get excited, you go to make a move, and if you press buy or sell, it's the equivalent of pressing send in that heat of the email battle. If you're not sure, just take a step back. Put the phone down and don't look. There's one crypto investor I speak to a fair bit who I'm very impressed with because they are sticking to the rules of determining their exit point based on time. They know that they're not going to do anything for years. And when I come across them and I say, oh, have you seen what's happened in the markets? They look at me with a blank look and say, no. Nah. And I really admire what they're doing. Now, my job, my obsession, my hobby, everything that I'm doing in the background is revolving around crypto. So I have to watch what's happening. I'm constantly keeping up to date. But for the wise investor out there who's not making a living out of this, that is, they're only investing what they can afford to lose, they've predetermined their exit points to be many years down the track. They don't need to keep watching this. They just simply dollar cost average, and they've even set up automatic purchasing that every week they purchase a certain amount of crypto, so they don't even see what's happening in the background. And I think that is brilliant. If you are a day trader or a swing trader, or you're of the impression that you're going to put in these few bucks today and buy the Lambo tomorrow, watching these markets consistently can really mess with your emotions. If you know that you've only invested what you can afford to lose and you're not going to sell for some time, you don't even need to look at it. Put the screen down, walk away, read a book, go to the gym, carry on and be calm, and all will be well. Moving on to number three, buy the dip and hodl. There's nothing fun about wholesale market corrections, but they do happen. And in general, they're a normal, healthy part of a trending market. Markets will always, over time, revert to the mean, which in Bitcoin's case is a remarkably steady uptrend that stretches back to 2013. The violence of last night's meltdown was obviously unexpected, but the strength of the run-up from December to April was similarly extravagant. Balance had to be restored. But as the old saying goes, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Or as cryptos like to put it, buy the effing dip. 
At the end of the day, this may be the end or it may be the halftime break before things really get moving. But let's be honest, two weeks ago, most of us would have killed for the chance to buy Bitcoin at this price. Are we really giving up so easily? End the email there, very well written from the good people at CoinJar, specifically from Luke. Good job. As we can see, the markets are all over the shop at the moment. Just whilst recording this, Bitcoin is now in the green, going up 2.2%, and Ethereum is getting a little bit better. Some have screamed saying this is a dead cat bouncing. Others have said this is the opportunity of a lifetime at getting Bitcoin at the lowest price we'll ever see it again. And as I mentioned before, others have thrown in the towel, picked up stumps and stormed off the crypto battlefield, swearing they will never come back again. There's one thing that I want you to consider. We can see through the power of the decentralized ledger that those who came into the space early are holding their position. We can also see that the whales are still continuing to buy large amounts of Bitcoin at a very low price. And then we can finally see that the majority of people who are fleeing the crypto markets are those who came in during this massive bull run. All they knew was one direction, and that was up. The second they were exposed to a downturn, they freaked out and ran away. If you survive what we're going through now, and you hold steady, and even perhaps buy the dip, and look back at this time in years to come, you will realize that the fortunes that you have earned have been legitimately earned not just from getting lucky, but showing courage, resilience, and tenacity. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Be brave, and I'll talk to you next time.